And this is the last part of our introduction to food and beverage service. And we've been talking about the meal experience and the several factors that uh, dictate whether you will be having a memorable or a forgettable meal experience. So there are several factors. One is the food, the food and beverages offered, whether uh, it includes a range of food and beverage choices, the availability of each dish, the flexibility for special orders, and the quality of food and beverages being offered. Next is the level of service. So of course, it will depend on the needs uh, that people have at a particular time, but it mainly talks about how quick and efficient the level of service is being given by the food and beverage staff. And then third is, of course, also important, the level of cleanliness and hygiene. It relates to the dining area, the equipment that you are using, the utensils, the plates, the tables, and even the cleanliness of your staff. So it is also being, uh, it is also being uh, dictated, and it is also being uh, seen and judged by those customers specifically if they are, uh, if they are a person who is very strict when it when it comes to hygiene and sanitation so the staff the members uh, the food and beverage servers should always be neat and decent looking and then the perceived value for money and price is also important and in going to a restaurant most of your customers will be paying for the food and paying for the experience so it is now up to the customers whether the amount that they paid is worth the food and the experience that they have in your restaurant and usually if the perception or the impression that they have is equal to the uh, perceived value or the price that they paid then we can say that they can be satisfied with the experience but if the perception or the impression that they have in the first place is less than the value or the price that they have paid in your restaurant then you can say that they may not be satisfied with the service so the key is to always exceed the customer's expectation or perceptions for you to say that there is value in their experience. And of course, the atmosphere of the establishment is also important, such as the design, the decor, the lighting, the furnishings, and even the sound, the smartness, and the attitude of the staff. So all of these five factors contribute whether you will have a satisfied meal experience or an unsatisfied meal experience. So let's proceed with the different uh, organization in food and beverage service or the different personnel or the key persons in a food and beverage service organization. So here is a small hotel organization. You can see the hierarchy from the general manager to the rank and file, the housekeeper, but an organizational chart will depend on how big the organization or the establishment is. Let's say a hotel may have several restaurants and they may have uh, a couple of bar and a dessert shop. So meaning to say they will have a big organizational chart. So this one is a, an organizational chart for a large hotel wherein you start with the general manager as the head and it is further divided into different department F&B, personnel, control, marketing, and front of the house and then it is further divided as we go down the hierarchy. 
So we have here the different positions in food and beverage service operations. You have your F&B manager. Of course, this is uh, considered one of the highest position in the food and beverage service organization. So, and then you have, uh, so basically the F&B manager must ensure that the targets are being met and the targets are uh, being followed the standards are being followed as well by the different staff under his department and you have the restaurant manager or supervisor so the restaurant manager is responsible for one restaurant in a hotel you have your reception head waiter And then you have the head waiter, the maitre d'hotel or the supervisor. You have the station head waiter or the section supervisor. So there are a lot depending on how big your uh, operations is. And then you have the station waiter or the chef de rang. In French, one service station is called a rang. Which is why they call it chef de rang or the station waiter. You have the chef, demi chef de rang or one half station waiter or waiter. You can you have the commis de rang or the junior waiter. So the commis de rang sets up the guéridon or the trolley, and he performs the mise en place, and as well as the serving of the meal. The commis de suite is the food runner. The commis de berser is the table clearer. So the duty of a commis de berser is to clear the table. The apprentice or the apprentice is a future waiter in training. The carver or the troncher is in charge for the carving. And the floor service staff or the chef d'etage or the floor waiter is in charge of the serving of meal in a complete floor. This is also uh, specifically in a hotel. The lounge staff or the chef de salle usually serves morning coffee, afternoon tea, and liqueurs. The wine butler or the wine steward or the sommelier or the chef de vin maintains the wine inventory. Uh, this person recommends wines to guests, assist guests in wine selection, and serve wine properly. So there is a specific person that is uh, really just focusing on the serving, the suggesting, and the selection of wine. The cocktail bar staff is trans responsible in the mixing, shaking, and the steering of cocktails. The buffet assistant or the chef de buffet is in charge of the buffet room. The cashier is responsible for processing the bill or taking payments. The catering or banqueting staff usually is on an on-call basis. They help prepare the table, the venue, the setup, and the decorations in a banquet function. So. This is now important because uh, uh, no matter how good looking or skilled you are, you also have to possess several attitudes and attributes of an F&B service personnel for you to become successful. As I have mentioned, when guests visit a restaurant, they don't just criticize the food, the decor, they also criticize the servers or the staff that provides the service. So an F&B personnel should have a professional and hygienic appearance always. They should always look clean and they should use deodorants but not too strong smelling. They must not have uh, facial hair for the guys. And of course, you have to have a sufficient sleep because uh, when 
you don't sleep enough, you will be sluggish in the morning and it may affect yeah, the quality of your work in the restaurant and you must have regular exercise as well. And then particular attention should also be paid to the hands. Your hands must always be clean, free of stains and make sure that the, tri that the nails are always trimmed. Men should always be clean shaven without any mustache or beard. But uh, nowadays there are restaurants who are as who are not as strict when it comes to facial hairs among guys. And then women should wear light makeup, earrings should not be worn except for pearl earrings. Uniform should always be clean and ironed. Hair must always be well groomed. You should have clean cut and the shoes must always be comfortable. The teeth should always be brushed immediately uh, immediately before coming to duty. Cuts and burns should not uh, be exposed. It should be always covered. Excessive jewelry should not be worn and avoid mannerisms like running of fingers, chewing of nails, etc. Knowledge of heaven be is also important. You must have sufficient knowledge of all the items that you are serving. And then you must be able to serve dish correctly. And you should know how to serve the various types of wines and drinks in your establishment. And then you must always be punctual. Do not come to late, uh, to, on duty late because it shows a lack of interest in your work. And you also have a look, you must have a local knowledge of the area because some customers might be uh, asking questions regarding the different points of interest in the area. So you should be able to answer them and give them suggestions. Personality also is important. You must be courteous, good humored, and you must always smile at the right time. Attitude to customer, correct as correct approach is also uh, important they then you must provide service that anticipates the customer needs and you should always have a careful watch at the table you are assigned to memory is also important you must have good memory because you will be taking orders from the guest and honesty and being trustworthy is also an important attribute loyalty and conduct of course the ability to sell your dishes is also important as well as the sense of urgency and lastly you must be able to address complaints from the guests because there will be customers who will be always complaining and finding faults in your restaurant so you should have a pleasant manner in dealing with them and you should not allow any displeasure coming from the guest. You should never argue as much as possible. You try to evaluate things and to find solution on how you can address the problem. If all else fails, of course, you might need the help of your manager or your supervisor. And these are the following attributes uh, needed for an F and B staff for him to be able to function properly. And that is my last slide for this introduction to food and beverage service. And I hope you have learned something. You have learned uh, new uh, new insights and new ideas and new information from this introduction. So I'll see you again in the next video for this course, Food and Beverage Service. Have a good day, everyone.